G'day, I'm Brendan Wing, and welcome to another episode of You Fish TV. Guys, I'm really excited. It's like a dream come true. I've never ever caught a marlin, and I feel honoured to be on one of the best marlin boats in the country right now. A boat called No More, out of Port Stephens. Today, skipper by Changa, and of course, the first thing you do when you go marlin fishing is you go and catch your bait. And it doesn't get any better than that. Well, you won't get the smile off your face all day. <laughs> There he is. And that one is a frigate man. Up, tightening it up. Changa, we'll start doing it up a bit. <laughs> it's big, whatever it is. We got out of the shelf, we needed some slimies. Chang has quickly rigged up a, I think it's a frigate mackerel, to tow around where we sounded around for some bait balls or some slimy balls. And we found one, so we stopped. Dropped a jig down into the bait ball. This bait was in the rigger, just sunk down into the depths. 
Next thing you know, the rigger popped. And something's on. Too deep. Well, she's about to jump out again. Oh, it's a big fish. I got him. Oh, nice fish. How's that, mate? You mean walk forward? Try and, try and get the swivel straight to the end and then I'll... When that leader comes up, walk back. Well, there you go. Nah, no problem at all. But you know what? We've got the tag in. Winger gets his first male on. Changa! Hold well on, mate. Woo! Cut the gate because the horse is bolted. Well, there you go. I've been fishing nearly 30 years. And I picked one fine day. Made the, made the trip up on the plane. Got on the boat with the guys. And in the first hour of trying for marlin, pretty much on my first ever marlin trip, uh, yeah, we got a hookup. It didn't go down like I hoped it would go down. I wanted to sort of hold it myself and bring it in the boat and get a photo and let it go, but at the end of the day, she's still swimming. And as our catch cry goes, we're thinking future anyway. So now I'm going to show you something. This is my official I caught a marlin card, my tag card, filled out by Changa. He's an experienced skipper. He's called that fish at 90 kilos, black marlin. All right. Port Stevens, length about 2.5 metres. So there you go. That's my first marlin. And hopefully it's a sign of things to come and we can get a few more and hopefully I'll get my chance to put my hand on one and touch one and tell her I love her. Now have a look at that's one Changer's rigged up. That's what the marlin just took, that exact bait, on a circle hook. And the idea is, that's why we, we don't just lock up the drag and then strike the fish, we slowly ease the drag up. And the idea is, it pulls that slowly out of the stomach of the marlin, and that slowly wraps around the jaw of the marlin. Once it's caught, and it's all sort of guessing, we slowly tighten the drag and that will eventually get set. And that's how it works. That looks like about 400 fluoro, 400 pound. We've got about, looks like about 12 feet. Just clipped onto a 250 kilo snap swivel onto a 100 pound wind on, okay? We're just gonna feed this out. It's called a skip bait. Put it at about 50 metres. I know that's 50 metres when the red line gets taken off. Watch, that's a marker. 
There we go, I've got 50 metres out. Now, it's still pretty tight. I'll put in the rod holder. I'm going to grab this line here. I'll hold like that. I make 15 turns. Right, then that gets clipped into this clip. Everyone come and have a look. This clip here goes in like that. And when a fish grabs it, it pulls out. So we're going to put that loop in there and clip it in. We can adjust this thing here to adjust the tension of the of what break at what pounds it pulls out. So when a fish grabs it, off it goes and engages the reel. So let's put it in again. Now, this is called an outrigger. Watch you go up. Okay, that's now 25 feet outside the line of the boat. We've got one inside the boat. One's back about 60 metres, one's back about 50 metres. They're both just skipping on the surface and jumping on the surface. It gets them out of the whitewash and makes them easily visible. The idea is now a fish comes along, Bill whacks it, grabs it, whatever. It's going to pull out the clip, it's going to activate the drag, but we're going to have the drag sit very, very lightly. The reason we go to free spool. We don't want to rip that circle hook out of the fish's mouth. If he swallows it, he'll put it in his guts. We want to slowly, turn by turn, as the fish is running, do it up two kilos at a time until it gets about six or eight kilos. And at that point, it's about at his jaw, it turns around in the jaw, and we get a solid jaw hook up. I've been learning off the best. If you can give us three or four basic real big tips that we can knock over in a couple of minutes that would help people find the marlin, what would they be? Well, you need to be where, where the fish are. Yeah. And like with any fishing, be it trout or brim or whatever, um, either bait or structure, you know, something like that. Something's going to hold the fish there, not just be wandering around the ocean. So obviously you find the bait with your eyes and also with the sound or just the sound or? Birds. Will locate bait for us if yeah. you're just looking generally. Otherwise, I'm always looking at the sounder. Uh, bait, the shape of the bait, what it looks like. If it's being fed on or if it's just sitting down there flat, you can usually tell when we've got your fish. We've got your fish, we pulled up, I've marked some good bait that looked like it was being fed on. It only just started to come on the sounder and I knocked it out of gear. And as soon as I knocked it out of gear, that's when we got yeah, the rigger snap. Yeah, so, what is the ultimate bait. thing to see? What's, what indicates that there's marlin in the area and and it, it's, a, it's a kind of bait school that's being fed on. Uh, the, the shape of the bait, if it, if it goes vertical or, or peaks or gets split or broken, uh, and a lot of the time you can actually see the marlin or mark the marlin under that or beside that break or the split or under, under the thing. You see like a mark next yeah. to the bait ball, okay. Yeah. So you really want something tight with a point on top, not scattered everywhere. Yeah, if it's scattered it's usually not being fed on. It's just okay. Everywhere. Yeah, Ben, do you want to take these off and I'll bring those? Oh, well, you're going to go there off because it's right-handed. All right, Diane's just seen a big splash at the bow of the boat. We think it's a marlin. Chang has just given out the call. Let's get a live out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a slimy down on a circle hook. Keep your arm up. Probably have to back it off a little bit, Diane. Alright, show us what you got there. Slimy mackerel. Slimy mackerel? I think the, the proper name is a, is a blue mackerel. Yeah. Open your gate. Yeah, he's hanging up top there. Hurry up, he says. Get it down. He doesn't like to see him He's going the under. He's alright. Good bit of spotting that, Diane. Thank you. Now, the theory is if there's a marlin here and we saw right. Chang is saying they've got exceptional eyesight. They can see like a 50 cent piece at 100 metres in clear water. So if there is a marlin down there, he already knows that that live is swimming around. Diet's just going to put him down, get him down about 30, 40 metres, let him sit there, put him in the holder, and then if it if it happens, it happens. Got it. Okay, what's happened is 
We're seeing a splash as we're trolling along. Oh! Get over my shoulder, Luke. Yeah, mate. There he is. Jack Culbrick. We get in front of you, see this? So we got Livy and lowered it down under the boat. And again, I've just done a real slow uptake till we've got to drag now. We've got drag, so I went from no drag to six kilos of drag over about 60 seconds. That's what Changa says to do, that's what I'll do. This is the lightest outfit we got. It's still a 20,000, but it's only uh, 50 pounds. What sort of marlin is it? Black? Yeah. Oh, nice jump. Sounding. This is not a bad first experience at marlin fishing. We're out on a boat called No More, M O O R, as in mooring. And I believe that this boat is leading the points aggregate for the Sydney Game Fishing Club. going down. Well, this is what happens. We had our chance to tag him. We fluffed it. And now he's going to hurt me. <laughs> but, good news is, if we get him back from this run, he's going to be buggered. Which means it'll be a lot more docile on the boat, a lot easier to control. Today we've got Luke Worst behind the camera. The little buddy from Shimano. We get together every now and then and do special things up the, the more tropical end of this country. But one day I'm going to get him down on those bluefin at Tassie and, and pay him back for the GT that hurt me at New Cal. Show him what pain is. Well, let me just explain what's happening in... Before when the fish was jumping, I thought, how lucky am I? How lucky am I to have it to, in my life to come out off my home, my homeland here, Australia, with a bunch of friends and catch a fish, just a majestic beast like that. And for it to behave like that for us is just incredible.
One of the things about the guys with fishing with, they like to use the boat, they like to be aggressive and charge down the fish with the boat, get a tag in it. Because when they fish competition, they're out enjoying the resource without having an impact. They don't keep any of the fish. So the competition is usually won by he who tags the most marlin. But I want to enjoy the moment. I don't really want him to be chased by the boat. I want him to hurt me and just go man versus fish, head to head, and have a clear winner. I've grabbed the left-handed rod again. You know what, I'm actually getting quite good at it because I've been practicing so much. There's no point trying to wind. If this fish doesn't want to come up, there's nothing I can do. I can give it more drag, I'm not gonna. It's the lightest outfit in the boat. Don't be deceived, I know it looks like a, a $20 Kmart rod. That thing's pure carbon, and it's as tough as steel. Well, tough as diamonds. It's called a Blue Rose. It's a jigging rod, but I find them very useful for trolling and live baiting as it turns out. Probably couldn't have tagged it better than that. Um, we got the tag in, we traced the fish, he shook his head, and off he goes. But I ain't complaining, that was pretty awesome. At the end of the day, we want them all swimming. We are thinking about the future, and you know what? The fishermen up here make the economy. The coast is just covered with thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that enjoy the water as a part of their life. They know what's out here, they enjoy it. They come out here every day. They fish, they all own, own boats. But there's a small group among us that want to take it all away from us. We are girt by sea and it's not right. And as you see, we can come out and enjoy a resource and not have it, you know, not damage it, not take from it, not in any way endanger it. But people want to take it from us anyway. You, should, you just need to know that, and I'll tell you what, when the call comes, we all need to get behind any movement to stop it happening. Because it's our God-given right as Aussies to enjoy those beautiful fish.